and uh, what stands out to you about the stars? Yeah, I mean, they're just a really solid team uh, all throughout, and they've obviously been playing some really good hockey. They don't make it easy on you, so uh, it'll be another really good test and challenge for us tonight. How was, how was doing the Pat McAfee show, and where do you think hockey sits in terms of how much it's getting promoted in, in the States? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, um, you know, obviously, uh, I'm a football fan, so I like to watch, and uh, so it was cool to be on it. And, um, you know, I think there's obviously a... Uh, uh, you know, you can see it trying, you know, the NHL, ESPN, everybody trying to kind of, um, you know, promote the game, grow the game and uh, reach out to, uh, you know, I guess just different levels of, um, you know, just spreading the game all around. So, uh, I mean, I think that part's important for, for us and for the NHL just to continue to, uh, to evolve and grow in that regard. They're starting at Whitewood rather than Ottinger. Is that got any radar? Do you spend much time thinking about who you're facing in the other net heading into a game? Uh, I mean, a little bit, but um, yeah, I think you just look at their team as a whole and the way that they've been playing. Um, you know, I don't think it really matters who's in that for them. They they play the same way every night. They play hard and they make it difficult on the opposing team. So, um, you know, regardless of who's in that, it'll be a good challenge for us. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, they make it tough uh, to get into to scoring zones and create opportunities offensively. And so, um, we'll just have to be ready for that to try to break them down. How have you felt about the line five on five in terms of trying to generate offense? Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, you know, it's still a bit, uh, you know, it feels a little bit disconnected at times, but I think there's also some, some really good moments that we've had, but I think just uh, wanting to have more overall consistency and at five on five is important, and you know, we're just going to continue to work and continue to try to, uh, to bring that. So, um, yeah, lots of good, some, some obviously stuff you'd like to clean up and, and be better at, but um, you know, I think we'd just like to continue to progress. What, I, what stood out most to you about Ottinger in, in your time with him? Um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I was around him for one year, but uh, I mean, him and Wooler I've gotten to know, and um, you know, different personalities, but both uh, extremely focused and have such a just calm, cool demeanor in the net. Nothing really seems to to rattle them, and um, you know, he's obviously. Uh, you know, found a really good place here and has been playing really well for them. And, um, you know, he's a great goalie. He's a really good, good guy, too. So, um, you know, it's been fun to see his success. And, um, yeah. Have you felt at the dot this year the numbers are a bit down? Is that an early season kind of thing? Or uh, how are you feeling on faceoffs? Yeah, a little bit. I think just timing and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'd obviously like to be a little bit better in there and so we can start with the puck, especially offensive zone, uh, you know, starts and stuff like that. But um, you know, I think it's mostly just timing. Awesome. Two guys in particular, uh, Rope Hintz and Miro Haskin, and how have you, what's your experience been like going against those two, and how have you seen them kind of develop throughout their careers? Yeah, I mean, they're great players. Um, you know, both of them can fly, and um, they really just come into their own, and, you know, they're always difficult guys to play against, and, um, and I think uh, both those guys have been big drivers for this team and uh, the success that they've had the last couple of years. With Haskin, like a guys. defenseman who is kind of, a defenseman first as opposed to offense how kind of rare is that in the nhl in terms of you know prioritizing that and, and being good at that first well i mean he can do both pretty elite so um you know he obviously is really good at taking care of his own end but he's always uh jumping up in the rush always making things happen offensively and like i said just driving this team so yeah great um i mean i think like we've all expressed in our you know Previous times always being asked about him is he just comes with such a calmness. Um, you know, he's always ready to take on the role whenever he's called upon. So um, it's great to see. He obviously brings a lot of athleticism, um, never quits on pucks. So, um, you know, pretty fortunate to have two great goalies. Where do you feel the, your line is at uh, trying to generate offense five on five? Yeah, I mean, I think we've had looks. Um, you know, just stuff hasn't gone in. Um, yeah, I think for us, you know, we haven't gotten frustrated. We can't get frustrated because that's when stuff really starts going wrong or turnovers and uh, mistakes happen. So, um, you know, I think um, we haven't been forcing it too much. Um, we're just trying to play the game that we always play and, you know, let the uh, let the results come. Austin was saying it feels maybe a bit disconnected at times. Is that early season stuff? You've had a couple different wingers there. Yeah, probably. I mean, um, you know, obviously we've gone through quite a bit of you know, players on our left side. So, um, you know, every single guy brings it a little different. Um, it is pretty quick to adjust to him, I think, once you get a feel with him. But, um, you know, just really haven't got a full feel with one yet. But, um, 
you know, we'll see. Like I said, we're not, you know, panicking or anything like that. We know it will come, and we just got to stay patient with it. You're starting Wedgwood rather than Ottinger. I'm just curious how much you pay attention to the other team's starting goalie going into a game. Not a whole lot. I mean, any goalie in the National Hockey League is a hell of a goalie. So, um, you know, I don't think you can really uh, look upon goalies and, you know, think one's easier than the other. Are, they all have their own skill, and they're all um, very good in their own way. Obviously, this league's very hard to make in, especially in that position. So, um, you gotta be ready for all the opportunities and um, you know nothing changes in that aspect in our minds. How often do you change gloves during a game? Um, every four or five minutes probably TV timeouts I usually change them throughout um, you know depending on the rink where we are atmosphere wise of just like if it's too hot in the arena sometimes um, you know I don't like my hands getting too sweaty um, my gloves too hot or sweaty either so um, kind of just depends I guess how hot the rink is inside and how sweaty my hands are getting but you know, for sure every TV timeout and maybe a little bit before that. Is that normal for the guys on the team or you do you think you change more than? I don't know. I, I, I never really used to like doing it, which is hilarious. I always liked my gloves really soggy and wet and then, I don't know, I started kind of doing it. Um, just seeing guys do it, you know, started trying it out myself just through TV timeouts with the same pair of gloves, started liking it more and, you know, we have a pretty amazing equipment staff here. So they just said, why don't we just get two gloves going and then at that point, why don't we get three gloves going? So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just kind of came to fruition one year and um, just through a couple games and just stuck with it like it's a feeling now. Recently? Like last no, year? Pro yeah, year probably like two years ago or so, maybe through a COVID year, kind of really started. Just, yeah, I don't know. I just started um, throwing my gloves in the dryer for TV timeouts and get the same ones back and then, you know, realize I can just get a new pair and wear those while those ones are sitting on the dryer for five or six minutes. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've been a lot of guys on our team. I think switch gloves throughout periods and stuff like that. But maybe I just do it a little extra. Just I don't know. I like uh, like the feeling of it. Oh man, I I absolutely loved here. I wasn't here for long, obviously. I enjoyed every second. They treated me super well and welcomed me in with open arms. But. Uh, uh, no, the, the experience of, of going all that all the way that far and, and then coming up a little bit short, that that hurts a lot. Something that I think everyone in that room will remember because um, I think every guy in that room believed we could win last year and got pretty close but came up short. So it's uh, it's a tough pill to swallow, but cherished every second of it for sure. What do you learn from kind of going through games and moments like that? Um, I know it's a cliche answer, but you just learn how hard it is to win. Um, I think you look at the roster we had with the Stars last year, and I mean, obviously they're still pretty much a similar team. Um, you, you're built to win, and uh, you got so much depth. You got a good mix of young and older guys, and it's like, okay, here we go. It's time, time to do it. And um, little change of momentum here and there, mistake here and there, and, and, and it can cost you your, your season, right? So um, it's, it's playing chess, definitely not checkers out there. And, uh, the attention to detail is, is insane. So I um, learned all, all those details and just trying to bring that into this locker room as much as I can. Is it more painful the deeper you go? I, I think you know the answer to yeah, that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, you, we were like one of the last three teams right? and you can you can taste it, um, but still a long way to go. So um, it was it was it was a huge learning experience for for myself personally and and definitely that whole that whole locker room over there. But. They got a great group. They're off to a great start and super happy for them. But uh, no friends out there tonight. You have a lot of experience playing old teams. Like, what is this going to be like tonight? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, it's weird uh, because I think by personality, you get to know guys pretty quick. I wear my heart on my sleeve and um, pretty open book. So um, it's it's always strange when, when you're, even if you're like when I was in Carolina, I didn't, wasn't there for much longer either. But uh, you build relationships pretty quick when you're on a good team and when you have some playoff time, lots of time on the road and stuff. So, um, and I, 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 I've been lucky. I've played on some great teams and, and, and met a lot of great people, um, both on and off the ice and, and the staffs involved. And, and I've cherished every second of it. It's been, it's been a fun ride and I'm super happy with where I'm at now and in, in Toronto playing at home and, and this group has been outstanding and just looking forward to keep building every day here. Along those lines, just last year in the playoffs, the Domi chance in the AAC and stuff, just yeah. what was the, what was the fan relationship like for you with, with oh, during man. that? I mean, the atmosphere in, in the playoffs is, is great everywhere, but um, Dallas was, was amazing. Um, I don't think this, this team or this, this franchise has gotten nearly enough credit, um, that the fan base certainly hasn't got enough credit because uh, best kept secret in the NHL as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's a great place to live, great place to play. And uh, when it comes to, to playoff hockey, it's, 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 um, it's amazing. I mean, I, I have nothing but great things to say about the fan base and everyone involved for this organization. What surprised you most about the city, about living in Dallas? It's great. I mean, 
people are awesome. Um, weather's great, obviously. It rained a little bit more. I mean, Saad <laughs> could talk to that, but uh, I, I wasn't expecting much rain, and it rained a decent amount, but it was still really nice out. It rained for like 20 minutes, and then it'd be nice. But uh, no, just just living here in, in general, um, met a lot of great people, and I mean, we were just talking about it. When, when hockey's going good, everything's good. So you can be playing in Antarctica. I mean, it doesn't matter where you're playing. Um, you're going to have fun if, if the, the stuff on the ice is going well. So um, great experience for me personally in Dallas. Wedgwood tonight instead of Ottinger. What did you learn about Scott Wedgwood? Uh, I mean, Wedgie is is uh, he's he's an unbelievable goalie. Um, spent a lot of time with him. I, I know him pretty well. Had him in Arizona too. So good buddy of mine. And um, I mean, they're they're lucky to have him, especially to back up a guy like Otter. He's one of the best in the world right now. And um, I think Wedgie can 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 be a starting goalie in this NHL, right? So um, it says a lot about a guy that's. When, when you have one of the best and, and you can lean on a guy like that as well to step in and, and make some big saves. So we're going to have got our hands full tonight for sure. Last year you said that Rope is kind of like a video, a, a player you make in a video game. Yeah. Just, you know, what, what's, it, what's it like, you know, learning what he's about mm-hmm. and now going up against him? Yeah, no, I mean, everyone on their team, they're, they're, they're all great players and looking forward to the challenge tonight. Um, Rope's one of the best in the world too. So, um, you know, I, I think we're going to have to key in on, on guys like that, him, Pavs, Robo. I mean, Obviously, Chubbs and, and, and you got Y Johnson, and the list goes on. There's, there's so much talent there, and um, we have we have a lot of talent here too. So, um, got to find a way to, to outwork him, outcompete him, and, and out execute them. Should and, be fun. And what did you learn about Miro through through your time here, and just what he brings? One of the best in the world again. Uh, I mean, the, the guy is unbelievable. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, you know, but um, for for people back home that that don't get to watch the stars much, he's he's the most underappreciated guy as, as far as I'm concerned in the league. Um, he's a great human being, and um, him and Rupert are both super humble kids that obviously come from a background of, of, of earning everything they've gotten, worked very hard, and I'm super happy for both their success. But hopefully, uh, they're not ready to go tonight. <laughs> What's the most unique thing about Pete DeBoer as a coach? Um, uh, he, you know, he, he's, he's, he's a great coach. Um, he takes, uh, he takes a lot of time out of every day that to focus on his players and he cares about you, not just as, as a hockey player, but, but more so uh, even as a human being. And I think when, when a coach buys into your lifestyle, I mean, you're, your significant other, your, your family and, um, asking questions and really like you, you, feel that much, like how much he cares about you. You're willing to do that much more when it comes to, I mean, going through a wall on the ice for him. So, um, again, I've been been real lucky. Had some great coaches, and he's pretty much at the top of that list for sure. Back with uh, Joseph tonight. What uh, was the thought process there? He's, he's obviously played extremely well. That's part of it, and the other part, probably uh, uh, equally as, as significant, is just gives us more time for Sammy here. Coming off a day off yesterday, he gets a good workout today. You get a good practice day tomorrow, and then you know, get ready for Nashville. So uh, I think it works out well for both guys. What sort of challenge do the Dallas Stars pose? Uh, significant challenges. First off, uh, defensively, they do a, a really good job, uh, protect their net very well. Penalty killing is outstanding. And then they got lots of skill and size uh, throughout the lineup, both on forward and defense. So, you know, I think they're, they're a high quality team for a reason. Um, so you know, we'll be prepared for that, but you know, for us, it's a great chance to go up against a team that has all those things I just talked about, but also has got lots of confidence and is playing extremely well here in the early going. So a great challenge for us here leading this trip. What's your sense of uh, the Matthews-Marner connection, the line at 5-on-5 five five as they try and get the offense going again? Yeah, it's, it's uh, I wouldn't say it's executing at the level that, that, that we've, we've come to expect from them. Um, it's early, obviously, but I just think that some of the some of the passing, in particular, just hasn't quite been crisp and sharp, and, and execution hasn't been hasn't been happening. Obviously, we we focused a lot on on uh, yeah you know, the left winger and who's been with them, but I just think just if we just focus on those two guys, I think it's hasn't been hasn't been executing at the at the level that we'd expect. So, um, you know, they're going to stay with it. They're both working hard and doing good things defensively, but offensively, I think there's a lot of plays that in the past are are, are connecting that right now are, are getting broken up. Do you think that's just like an early season kind of thing? Yeah, that's all I can go to. Obviously, we've come to come to expect such a high level of execution for those guys that um, you know when, when plays are breaking up or not quite uh, quite connecting that you, know, you think it's just early season and timing and stuff like that but you know we'll continue to work with them and, and uh, give those guys time because they, they still have been 
they still have been very good. It's just a matter of, you know, that you know, that there's another level for them that they haven't quite gotten to yet. Are you still trying to find um, comfort with the personnel on the penalty kill, sorting that out? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, both in how we roll the guys out and also just those that are new. Uh, you know, you look at it between Matthews and and Nyes and uh, Gregor and Nylander, like we've got different guys there that have, have killed either not at all or, or very little in the NHL. So um, we're working, working through that and it's definitely uh, an area we've got to continue to give attention to. How would you assess Jake McCabe's game so far this season? I think it's been, uh, I think it's been inconsistent. At times very good, physical, strong, uh, at times move the puck really well. Uh, I think he's just really trying to settle into a role with our team, and, and we're, we're continuing to work with him on that. Mike Van Ryan's working with him every day and talking him through. I think you know at times we just want him to really simplify things and understand what we what we need from him. At the same time, his 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 skating and his feet get him into really good spots on the ice, so you don't want to take that away from him. But at times, you know, we, we just want him to get back and settle into his position and and help us defensively. Is your message to all your defensemen to pinch if they see an? opportunity to or are there different uh, instructions depending on which defenseman it is? No, generally, I mean, if there's an opportunity to, you want to go. I mean, I, that's 32 teams in the NHL play that way. That's the way the game is played today, and you don't want to take that away. The moment you start getting passive at times when you can be aggressive, you're going to spend a lot of time in your own end, and you're not going to get the puck back much offensively. So, uh, yeah, every team in the league plays that way. When there's opportunity and there's support, you want to be aggressive, we want to go. Uh, I'm less concerned about that uh, as I am times when we're on offense and and uh, we're being over aggressive at times when it's it's not the right time when there's no real reward to come from it. In that case, we want to make sure you're settled back in your position, and we have structure if the puck if the puck goes the other way. Sorry, uh, it doesn't look like Fraser will get back in. Is there just an opportunity you're waiting for him to kind of go back, or is it just kind of? Everything's clicking with the yeah. The guys well, right now. We like what Holmberg has brought and how that's changed things. So that's part of it. Um, we've had some guys here that have been you know sort of nicked up on this trip and and kind of day to day or at least they're on the injury report and we're kind of waiting on their status the next morning. It was the same here again today, um, and we've kind of got through that situation. So um, there hasn't been an opportunity for Fraser to get back in at this stage. But you know I think. Uh, there's lots of value in him being around our group here on a trip like this in particular and experience life in the NHL like that. And, and he's continuing to work with the reps that he does get. Uh, he's putting in his time. I think there's great value in that, and he'll be ready uh, if we need him here. Year six for Miro Haskinen. Uh, what have, how have you seen him and his game develop, and do you feel like he's maybe one of the more underrated defensemen in the NHL? Uh, I wouldn't know. I don't know if I'd say he's underrated. I think it's pretty well regarded in the league. I, you know, I, I'm lying if I say I studied the Dallas Stars and then watched too much of their games. Uh, but obviously, you know, they they're a top team and they've played deep in the playoffs. So you start to to watch, and I, I think. Uh, certainly around the NHL uh, with coaches and players uh, he's regarded as a, an elite defenseman but I think it's just the maturity the, the skating both offensively and defensively and uh, all of that kind of stuff that just uh, you know when you see a lot of the top flight defensemen in the league uh, today he's got all the ingredients that those guys have. Max Domi, uh, Max Domi when he came to Dallas last year brought that energy Pete talked about him kind of bringing that to the room what, what have you seen from what he's brought uh, to your room. Yeah, very similar. Like he's got great, lots of personality. He's always uh, got a big smile on his face. You can tell he loves the game. He loves being around the guys. Uh, so we've loved what he's brought there. And, and he's really been eager to please and, and want to really, uh, you know, do what the coaches are asking uh, him to do. Uh, so he's worked his way through that. I think his last couple of games have been his best games uh, as a Leaf. And, uh, you know, I think he's, he's just a fun guy to have around. He's got lots of experience in the league. He's played on different teams and different coaches, as we know. I think he's taken a little bit from all of that. Uh, I think he's at a, a stage in his career where he's really looking to find a role um, and, uh, and find a home. And, and I think that's something that we, you know, we enjoy working with him uh, sure. with. Tell them everything into changing the way the draft is. I don't know what the Leafs are going to do, whether the whole management team will go or not. What do you remember of your uh, draft day, and how much have you enjoyed meeting guys like Easton Cowan when, they, when they're called down and stuff like that? 
Yeah, well, uh, my draft day, you're talking about when I was a player? Yeah, that's a long time ago. But, <laughs> but uh, it's obviously it's exciting, a very exciting time for yourself and family, and it's a lot of uncertainty, you know, when you're, when you're not a guy that's expected to go really early. You don't know when you're going to go, and you're sort of on uh, eggshells, especially when you get in the neighborhood of where you might get picked. Um, but it's an exciting time. Uh, I, I do enjoy it, you know, from... Both in my current role and in previous role with the Marlies, I, I do enjoy being there on day one you know, when the player enters the organization. I think there's something to that um, that I enjoy being a part of and getting to, to know the player and see them right away. They see you from day one. I think there's some, there's some uh, value in that for sure, but I've also experienced on the other side through COVID and such where we were in our own facilities and uh, it's a lot more comfortable and you're able to have a lot more conversations openly and all those kind of things. So I see benefits all the way around, not an easy uh, decision to make.